If you're serious about learning, do not skip any part of this video. Everything's important and nothing will be repeated. By the end, you'll know how to wheelie any electric bike you can buy or build. If you'd like to buy or build your own e-bike, I'm giving away $10,000 cash. This giveaway is ending soon and there's never been so few entries, so I've linked it down below. In this video, I'll teach you how to wheelie street legal e-bikes, mini motos, surons, 72 volt surons, all the way up to full sized e-motos. Before you ride, do not be embarrassed gearing up. A helmet and gloves are the bare minimum. When I was learning, I was padded head to toe, boots, knee pads, spine armor. I recommend all of it. That being said, it doesn't hurt to have a cool shirt. I just released these limited edition e-bike wheelie shirts. I linked them down below and they do get you entries into the $10,000 giveaway. Now make sure your brakes are in check. If you cannot lock your rear wheel with one finger on the brake, your bike is not safe to wheelie. Start practicing on grass or with a trainer like this because the pavement is not forgiving. Don't be far from home. Do not go alone. And most importantly, have a great attitude. This takes time to learn. You're going to fall. You're going to scratch your bike. But this is all just for fun. So have a good attitude. Before wheeling an e-bike, let's cover the basics of wheeling acoustic. This is my 27.5 inch beast mode from SE Bikes. It's got no motor, one pedal gear, and a right hand rear brake. The first thing you need to do on this bike and any other bike is put your index finger on the rear brake. This is the one and only golden rule for wheeling any bike. Always have a finger over the brake and remind yourself to use it. Before each wheelie, repeat to yourself, rear brake, rear brake, rear brake. Envision a line from your brain down your arm to the tip of your index finger where the rear brake is and remember to use it. This is the one and only golden rule for any bike. I'll refer to it from here on out as the golden rule. So following the golden rule, we're gonna start pedaling up to our power band. This bike only has one gear, just like most e-bikes. The power band is where it's not too hard to pedal, but you still have torque. When you're at speed ready to pop, get out of the seat leaning your chest over the handlebars. When your dominant pedal, in my case, my right pedal, is at its highest point in the stroke, in one fluid motion, you're gonna wanna press down as hard as you can on that dominant pedal, simultaneously pulling back on the bars, throwing your weight back into the seat. Pressing down on that dominant pedal and pulling back on the bars, throwing your weight back is what lifts the wheel. Make sure to pull both ends of the handlebars evenly with your head pointing forward and your eyes on the horizon. Straight bars in a forward upright head position looking at the horizon is crucial for a clean balanced pop. Not only does a forward distant gaze help your balance, it also stops your head from dropping. If you drop your head, the whole bike's gonna drop and that's not what we want. It's gonna feel natural to look down at the handlebars, but force yourself to look ahead and it will become natural. The goal of this pop is to get directly into your balance point with only the one pedal stroke. We've all done this before. Leaning back in a chair until it feels like it's gonna tip. That tipping point is the balance point. You need that first pop to get you up into your balance point. Once you're up there, it's a delicate play between braking and pedaling, dancing around that balance point. You're never really in the balance point. You're always a little below it or a little above it. You pedal harder when the wheel's dropping below the balance point, and you feather the brake when the front wheel's coming above the balance point. On pedal bikes, after you pop, do not stop pedaling. Even if that front wheel is coming up past the balance point and you have to tap the brake, you should still be pedaling just with less intensity. This is something I wish I had known sooner. Moving up to the P51. This is a 750 watt hub motor, thumb throttle, left hand rear brake e-bike. Now most e-bikes have their rear brake on the left hand side like this, but if you've been learning on a pedal bike, most pedal bikes have the rear brake on the right hand side. Just know it's super easy to switch between the two as long as we're following the golden rule. This is the only street legal e-bike in this video, and it's also my favorite street legal e-bike, so I've put my discount code for it down below. Go ahead and remove the rear brake sensor. There's usually a little connector near the rear brake, and we're going to want to unplug it. Put it into its highest power mode and following the golden rule with a finger on the brake, we're going to get up to 10 to 15 miles an hour. On the balls of your feet with equal pressure on both pedals and the cranks horizontal, stand up out of the seat and in one fluid motion starting with your chest over the bars, compress down on the forks and down on the pedals using the immediate rebound to throw your weight back and into the seat. Just like on the pedal bike, we need to pull both sides of the handlebars evenly with our head pointing forwards and our eyes on the horizon. 
popping with the bar straight with your head pointing forwards and your eyes on the horizon is crucial. Practice this pop with no throttle. Using only your body weight and the rebound of the suspension, try to get that front wheel off the ground as high as possible. Once you're comfortable lifting the front wheel with only your body weight and the suspension, now add a full blast of throttle to that pop. This pop is crucial. It has to get you immediately into your balance point. With low power, there's low margin for error. That pop has to get you right into your balance point, just like on the pedal bike. For that reason, low powered e-bikes are the hardest to wheelie. You have to be locked into that balance point. There's very little wiggle room. However, they are the best to learn on because they're the slowest and therefore the safest. That being said, they're just as fun. Once the front wheel's up, it doesn't matter how big or fast your bike is. If the wheel's up, you're having a good time. Once you've popped the front wheel and you're up around your balance point, this is where the dance starts. You're hitting the throttle whenever the wheel starts dropping, and you're feathering the brake whenever you start getting too high. This dance around the balance point is a tricky one, but it's where all the fun happens. We're now stepping up from 750 watts to 11,000 watts. This is my Razer MX500 upgraded with the Electron Co. Extreme Kit. It's got a mid-drive motor, full twist throttle, and left-hand rear brake. This bike has the lowest balance point of any bike in this video. And for that reason, it's the easiest to wheelie and it's my favorite to wheelie. Coming with a free wheel in the back, this bike has no regen and no engine braking. So it wheelies a lot more like a pedal bike than a moto, which makes for great one-handers. Hug the bike with your legs. Sticking your knees out looks goofy and you lose control. Although this bike has plenty of power to pop the front wheel with only the throttle, I still use some body weight when I'm popping up. That way I'm not relying entirely on the throttle, which makes the pop more controlled and predictable. You do not need to compress the front forks like you did on the last bike. Just throw your weight back a little bit during the pop so it's not only the throttle lifting the front wheel. You do not need to go crazy with this pop. The balance point is super low on this bike. It's the lowest of any bike in this video. And you can find the balance point by holding that rear brake and messing around like this. Raising your handlebars by a couple inches helps a lot with wheelies, and so do these street wheels. The stock dirt wheels that this bike comes with I think are really difficult to wheelie. Just like the other bikes, when that wheel is up, we are dancing around the balance point. If the wheel's dropping, we're hitting the throttle, and if it's going too high, we're tapping the brake. Everything you do is an attempt to adjust yourself closer to your balance point, although you'll never really be there. You're always dancing around it. Now let's wheelie the Suron. This is a Suron X fresh out of the box. It's six kilowatts with a mid-drive motor, full twist throttle, and left-hand rear brake. All my tips for the Suron are the same for the Talaria Stang R and the Talaria X. The only difference being that the Talarias let you adjust your regen, which I'll talk about in a second. Step one, let's get out of granny mode, right into sport mode. Following the golden rule, we'll get up to 15 to 20 miles an hour. The amount of throttle you're using to get to 15, 20 miles an hour should leave your throttle wrist in the neutral position like this. If your throttle wrist is already like this at 15 to 20 miles per hour, you won't have any wrist mobility to pop the throttle. When you're ready to pop, get out of the seat with your chest over the bars. In one fluid motion, push down on the front forks and down on the pegs, using the rebound to throw your weight directly back and into the seat. At the same time, pull on the bars evenly, keeping them straight, with your head and eyes looking directly ahead at the horizon. This is the most important tip for a clean, controlled pop. To pick the front wheel up, it may seem intuitive to pull the bars up, but really we want to pull the bars back. Just like the P51, practice this pop movement with no throttle, using only your body weight and the suspension rebound to lift the wheel up as high as you can. Once you're comfortable picking up the front wheel with just your body weight in the suspension, then it's time to add a full twist of throttle to the pop. At all times, the only thing you should be focusing on is the golden rule. Have your finger over the brake and be ready to use it. Before every single attempt, repeat in your head, rear brake, rear brake, rear brake, at least three times. When you're first learning to pop, you're only gonna get the wheel about halfway up. And to keep it up, you're gonna max out the throttle. That's called a power wheelie or chasing the wheelie. Instead of focusing on how long the wheelie is, focus on how high the wheelie is. If you're using full throttle to keep your wheel up, you're chasing the wheelie. Slow down and focus on getting the wheel as high as possible. The higher up it is, the less throttle it takes to keep it there, and that's what we want. Here's some mistakes I see all the time. Looking down. It's natural to look down at the handlebars when you first pop up, but force yourself to look ahead at the horizon, leaning forward. It's natural to lean forward after you pop, but force yourself to stay in a backwards position where your back is essentially perpendicular to the bike. Keeping your head up with your eyes on the horizon is the best way to stop yourself from leaning forward. Not committing. Do not ask the bike to pop. Tell it to pop. 
put your entire body weight into it and use the entire throttle. If you're not committing everything you have into this pop, it is difficult to get the wheel up. Not practicing enough. Do not give up after an hour. Nobody in the history of bike life has learned how to wheelie in an hour. It takes a lot of time and a lot of practice. If you still can't wheelie, it's probably because you're not practicing enough. Dropping your legs. I was a victim of this. I watched every tutorial I could before trying, and I knew when the wheel gets really high, you want to hit the rear brake. But the moment my wheel got up there, everything I learned went out the window. I did not hit the brake. I dropped my legs. I looped the bike. I got really, really hurt. That's why the golden rule is so important. You need to remind yourself before every single attempt so that you're less likely to forget when you need it the most. Don't drop your feet. What goes up must come down. When you're coming down from a wheelie, make sure your bars are straight and your front wheel is straight. Do not come down at an angle. And the last mistake I see all the time is not hugging the bike with your legs. Not only do you lose control over the bike and you have to hold the grips that much harder, but it also looks ridiculous. Hug the bike with your knees. Now, supermoto wheels are way easier to wheelie on a Suron than the stock knobby tires. However, the stock knobby tires have the advantage in grass. So start with knobby tires in the grass, get comfortable with your pop, then switch to dual sport or supermoto wheels to practice on the pavement. On the P51, we took out the brake sensor right off the bat, but on the Suron, I would recommend keeping it in. It's better to have the brakes override the throttle any day when you're learning. But once you get more comfortable, go ahead and remove the brake sensor so you can really dance between the brake and the throttle. Raising your handlebars by three inches and moving your foot pegs to the furthest forward position makes wheeling the Suron easier. There are a ton of upgrades that make the Suron better for wheelies, and I'll talk about those in a second. However, the stock Suron is still perfectly fine for wheelies. I learned how to wheelie on a stock Suron. It was the first bike I ever wheelied. So try not to blame the bike out of frustration. It's rarely the bike's fault. The only thing about a stock Suron that could mess up your wheelie is actually the front wheel. When it spins, it creates a gyroscopic effect that helps you balance the wheelie. If your front brake is rubbing and your front wheel stops spinning in the middle of the wheelie, you will notice a huge loss of control. This used to eat me alive. I would feel great at the beginning of my wheelie, but a couple seconds in, I would lose all control, and it's because my front wheel stopped spinning. This is something I never hear people talking about in bike life, but it is a fact. If you keep that front wheel spinning, you will have way more control in the wheelie. Now, this is my upgraded 72 volt Suron, the Ronster. It's 14,000 watts with a stock Suron motor, Domino throttle, and Magura MT5 brakes. I have upgraded every single part of this bike. The only parts that are still Suron are the frame and the motor. It's powered by the 72 volt, 38 amp hour Chai battery, which I'll link down below with a discount code. The brain is an ASI BAC 4000 controller, and the shoes are 17 inch Supermoto wheels from Warp 9. I'm also running Italian EXT suspension on the front and rear. The best upgrades for wheelies are the 3 inch riser bars, supermoto wheels, and the upgraded power. But with upgraded power, you also want to upgrade your brakes. A full build like this will cost about $10,000. Fortunately, I'm giving away $10,000 and very, very few people are entering this giveaway, so I've linked it down below. With an upgraded controller like this one, you can tune your regen levels. Regen is how much the engine brakes automatically when you let off the throttle. That braking energy regenerates back into the battery. It's pretty cool. I think it's safest to wheelie with a high regen level. The rear brake on these bikes does overheat and fade over the course of your ride. With a high regen level, you hardly need to use your brake during the wheelie, which decreases the odds of it overheating and fading. However, some of of the best surround stunters in the world like Yappa Davis don't use any regen so it's totally up to you. Running this much power the throttle alone can lift your front wheel at almost any speed but just like the Razor Mini Moto I still like to put a little bit of body weight into the pop so I'm not relying entirely on the throttle. This makes the pop more controlled and predictable. Once you're up, it's the exact same dance between braking and throttling around your balance point. If you've never wheelied before, please do not make this your first wheelie bike. Practice on any of the other bikes we've talked about so far because these have no margin for error in the throttle. If you do find yourself on a 72 volt Suron and you're not ready to wheelie it, do a burnout. This is how you do it. Squeeze the front brake, press down on the forks, both feet on the ground in front of the pegs, and mash the throttle. This is my 2002 Yamaha YZ85 that's been restored and converted to electric by Electro & Co. It's running the same power as the Ronster at 14,000 watts. It wheelies the same, so let's summarize. 
we always follow the golden rule, repeating to ourselves, rear brake, rear brake, rear brake, before every attempt. In one motion, you hit the throttle and throw your body weight directly back, pulling the bars evenly, with your head facing forward, looking at the horizon. Your pop should get you as close as possible to your balance point, where you dance between braking and throttling. You're never just chilling at the balance point, you're always playing around it with brake and throttle. If you're looking to buy or build your own e-bike, I'm giving away $10,000 cash in the description of this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. As I do. Yeah.